Well guys, I'm about to go fishing, but I still got to finish the totally awesome job list. Few more jobs to do and I'll be off the hook. Excuse the pun. Anyway, check this one out. Might pass a little bit of time for you, give you a few ideas on what else I do. Might even give you the odd tip. <laughs> So, job 494, tick done, 495 done. Okay, 496, bonfire, that's going. 497, hedge trim. We're getting through that lockdown list, big time. So what I've got, guys, is a hedge at the front, which is a low one, a tall hedge back here, and you can see this one's pretty big. It's coming right out if I go alongside it like that. Sticking well out, so it does need a bit of a haircut. Now this is just the way I do it, you do it whichever way you want. I've cut plenty of hedges and this is just the way I do it. So I don't need the hedge trimmer society getting on to me saying that's the wrong way to cut it, you just cut it up, not down and all that business. I'm just telling you I'm passing my time when we're in this awful lockdown and I want to get the hedge cut. But what I do, I use these what they call hop-ups. I'll show you actually. Okay, so these are the hop-ups, they fold out and you've got a lock down there to lock and I space them apart like that because I can get up there and I can stand on them and I can walk along from side to side. Okay, so these, you can just get up there like this, okay. And you can just get on top of those and I can cut all the way along here. Oh, nice, brambles in it as well. So I can cut all the way along here, no problem. And that way my, the blood's going level with my arms. Not, I'm not like this all the time, stretching up. Also, if I'm using the ladder here, I'll show you, which I'm going to have to use the ladder, I can extend it to do the top. Okay, if I had the ladder alone, I'm going to have to move it, move it, move it, move it all the time. Which by using hop-ups, I can walk along the lot in one go. Now, I've got two hedge trimmers. I'm not selling them, no, I'm not selling them, I'm not plugging them. I'm just saying I've got two hedge trimmers. One is a regular petrol one, which I used to use all the time. And now, recently, I've got an electric one. Got it second hand off a friend, but here's the, th here's the balancing act for you guys. There is the length of the blade. You can see on this one, it's a lot shorter. This one is a lot longer. This one will cut more. This one will cut less. This one, however, is much better for me because it's plastic molded, doesn't have the fuel tank, it's electric, it's lighter. I'm just gonna weigh these two just to give you a good, good guide on it because the older you get, once the elbows go, then obviously you're going to have problems. What I also do is give them a little bit of oil when I first start up like this. So you can see here, those shuffle backwards and forwards, you know, one's rigid, doesn't move, and the other one's a, a moving one and it chops off, so don't get your fingers in and listen. It's just oil, it starts off. Once you get cutting, it will dry out. So you might want to do that two or three times if you've got a lot to cut. Uh, they've got the safety guards and the kill switches. So listen, just keep all the health and safety people happy. Uh, visors, goggles. I can't wear them. They steam my glasses up. I'll probably cut my fingers off. So I don't wear goggles, but I do have glasses. Pair of ear defenders. I'm wearing them because I'm going deaf in this ear anyway. So I don't want to damage my ears anymore, do I? Um, gloves, you can wear gloves if you want because there could be brambles, could be bits of barbed wire, you don't know what's in some hedges. So just look, it's safety, use common sense. Gonna use the old spring balance here if I can to, to just tell you what these weigh, just to give you a guide. This is obviously without, without the wire. And this one's saying five pounds, two ounces. That's the electric one, okay? This would, this would be a good, this one's broken double figures. This one, okay, the petrol version, just under 12 pounds. 11, 11 pounds, 12 ounces. That's 11 and three quarter pounds on my poor elbows and wrists. It's hard, it's heavy. I've used it for years, but I'm gonna cut this hedge. Take me a little bit longer with the electric one and save the elbows. Let's get started. Now the other tip is I just peeled a load of line off here because this will act like a coil and heat up depending on what power your electric tool is pulling. I remember once with a washing machine we plugged it in 
and the inside of the coil was unbelievably hot and it was melting so just be careful it's much easier if you've got a big coil that's a 50 yard one 50 meters peel a load of it off if not all of it off and that way it's a little bit safer it won't, won't heat up but always check what power you're pulling your unit right let's start from this end Now this is just my suggestion, with the lead up there and you're working this way, you are, if you watch the lead, you're pulling the lead behind you, going along here so it's fairly safe, you're fairly safe. Well you've got to be careful, it's very easy to get carried away doing all this hedge trimming because you know, it's, you can see stuff happening as you press the trigger. When you're working back this way, look, the way I'm going, cut, 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 just be aware you're going to have to throw this cable back and back and back all the time. Otherwise, you risk cutting it off and then you might cut yourself off because it is electric. So don't cut through the cable. I dare say the A&E people will tell you as many people do this, cut the cable. So if you're going backwards, work well, backwards, throw the cable away, just check it every now and then and hopefully you should be okay. Be careful when you step off of these. I personally, I'm telling you what I do at my age, I'm happier on those all the time. Painting, anything that's within that six foot height, I'm happy with those. But then I'm used to them. Let's move along. And of course you can do it with a cable here this way. Start here, but make sure you don't go over the cable or you start here and then go, obviously, with the, putting the cable behind you. Petrol ones don't make any difference. Now listen, I'm just cutting this hedge because I want to cut it back. I'm not cutting it for art's sake or the National Trust, am I? It's my hedge, this is how I'm cutting it. Because you know what it's like, people come on, oh, you should be doing this, you should be putting a piece of string along it. No, I'm just cutting my hedge. Also, you'll find if you're right left-handed, you might be better going this way up than you are that way or vice versa. Just remember if most of the cutting is done on this side of the blade, that might be the side you need to sharpen more when you do come to sharpen it. Or what I do, I try and make myself go this way so I utilize the blade because I personally, being right-handed, am more comfortable pulling it up like that. But, you know, try and use both sides of the blade. Now, the reason I wanna get this done and I've lit the bonfire first, because I hate dead stuff um, to burn and I want to get the embers hot enough so it can burn some of these more in a sort of smouldering pile on the bonfire. Take longer to burn through, but if it's hot enough, it will actually burn through. Let's wheel these down. During this lockdown, it's actually been a bit of a boon. Keep my mind occupied. Keep the old grey matter going and of course the physical stuff as well. Right, off we go. Garden's looking like it's Augusta Golf Course at the moment. I'm not surprised the number of times I've cut the lawn. I think the guy across the road cuts it once a week. You may think why this lazy man's dumped his wheelbarrows there. No, what I've done is drop my first two blocks here because the wind is coming from uh, sort of northeast to east. It's going to pick up, so I tend to light bonfires first thing in the morning because I don't want the smoke going over the neighbours. 
bothering I try to be courteous where possible and um, I pick the right wind direction which just streams across the field no problem these are helped to funnel the wind onto that and you can see that by the way the smoke's going away but this stuff is green so that will take a longer time to smolder through and I just don't dump it I shake it and sprinkle it put some up around the edge because that will also dry and being as I know the wind always comes up later in the day especially on a hot day like this I've got the pond I've got my emergency watering can there because I don't want it catching all the very dry pampas alight in hot weather dry weather I don't have bonfires at all so that's going to smolder down there and hopefully by the time I cut some more of the hedge this will start to go down they're going to call me Billy Three Wheelbarrows. That's hard to say, like red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Billy Three Barrows, that's better. Well, I just walking past the greenhouse, I notice the heads are forming on the lavatera, but these have curled and they've gone light. So I can see the light side of the leaf. That tells me that badly needs some water, so I'm going to do that straight away. <sighs> There we go. It doesn't take long for plants to die when it gets hot, hot and dry. Now, maybe this evening I can show you, even just doing this, soaking this, better give those silver salt and some as well. I'll give you that a second one. I'll come back this evening and we'll see if here these leaves have turned back inwards because I don't want to lose the blooms, they're going to be really colourful. Well, I had a break for lunch. Hazed over a little bit, it's got a bit hazy. Tomorrow's good weather in the morning, but then get really cold for about three days. So I want to get this other hedge done, the tall one's done. Show you that later. I've got my weapon of choice here. Same safety factors, don't chop over the cable. And of course, I've got power sets here, down here, down there, around the back. I can go and plug in electric anywhere with 50 yards of cable that reaches anywhere on the property. The reason I've got the pe petrol one is because I can go anywhere with that, can't I? So, that's what I keep the two. Petrol one for going off-grid, that's the word, Michael loved that. My off-grid hedge trimmer and my on-grid hedge trimmer. Let's get going.
And I've dumped so many uh, grass cans over here, it's about three feet, four feet tall, above the ground level. Go and check the other one out. Another job. Fountain's got to be commissioned. It's just non stop, isn't it? It's non stop. 498. There we go. Nice embers. I can all rake that outside in, which this will be dry, and I can rake it in the middle. The giant triffids are getting. Oh my god. Even more giant. Look at the size of them. Unbelievable. And the pond is getting clear. Hopefully we get some buds. I can see a bud in a lily. Yeah, there's two, three, four, five, six lily buds. If you remember, folks, just look at the way these leaves have come back because the sun's gone on them. Now, remember what that clip was this morning where I told you they need desperately need water. Here's the bud. Those leaves, just move this microphone, the leaves were curling in that way, if you remember, light colour. So when you see leaves curling in, you get the light colour. You know desperately need water. If you look at these, they're absolutely stretching up straight now. And they even curl back a little bit because the sun comes that way as well. So there's a tip when you see those leaves curl like that, get them watered ASAP. Around here, I discovered, oh my God, that's one of my jacket potatoes that I cut straight in half. So hopefully the others will come up, they've all been soaked. Something is mullering my run of beans here. You can see just there eating. If it's slugs, I've got to get some slug pellets. And here you can see is the hedge. I've hit it well back. It's only going to grow again. It's only going to grow, but I've hit it right back. Well, years ago, outside my garden fence, it used to be pheasant shooting. It's all stopped now. They've got rid of their cover crops. But look at the beautiful colours in this male pheasant that's come into my garden. And lo and behold, he's staying there. We've had it for about a week now. And he bought, yes, a few days ago, a young lady with him. Thanks for watching the totally awesome job in a show. Soon going to be fishing. There's fishing on a Friday, and I think I feel four or five fishing ones in a row coming up here. Bait rigging, that sort of thing. Who knows? You never know with our show. Look, guys, I don't know half the time myself. Hit the subscribe button, TA Outdoors, TA Fishing. We'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.